Good evening. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope that you can benefit from some of the things I'm about to teach uh, concerning skinning a turkey out. Uh, I am going to try to teach you a way to do it to where you can skin him out properly before you take him to your taxidermist if you want to do that. Most of the time your taxidermist will skin him out for you. However, if you find yourself in a situation somewhere um, where you're flown a long ways off to hunt and all that kind of stuff, uh, you're going to need to know how to skin this bird out and would you, for room purposes, to where you can get him in a cooler and uh, get it iced down and tra for transport to your taxidermist. Anyway, we're fixing to get started here in just a minute. I've got a nice bird hanging here. Uh, that was brought in. He's been in the freezer. Uh, I think he's thought up good enough to do what I'm wanting to do with it. And so I'm gonna get him down and we are gonna go from there on how you do that. All right, I like to take them and push their wings kind of out, loosen all this up a little bit and stuff when you start the best you can anyway. And for is the cuts on it, I always keep me some paper towels too, by the way. Y'all, this blood and stuff, man, keep the blood off your feathers as much as you possibly can. And by the way, uh, I, meant to, I meant to touch on that too. When you go on your hunt, some basic things you need to take with you to keep this blood and stuff off of your feathers. Uh, if you'll notice how nice this is, the iridescent looking colors and stuff, you don't want blood all over this. Now this bird here, he messed around and got a little on him, had the head folded over on it, froze it, thawed up, blood got on it, that kind of stuff. We can still take care of it, it's accidental all the time, but you'll get a much better mount if you will totally eliminate as much blood off your bird as you can. Get your little Ziploc baggie like this, put it in your uh, hunting turkey vest, and all it consists of is a roll of, of uh, black electrical tape and a nice uh, section of paper towel, okay? Once you get your bird on the ground, you need to get out to that bird as soon as possible if you're planning on mounting this bird and get this bird to stop moving. I mean, they'll lay there and flop and, and, and you know, jump and carry on. And what they're doing, they're just destroying these feathers and stuff as they do that. Any way you can hold this bird down, just get it and hold it down. Just be extremely cautious with these spurs right here because I know I'm speaking to some people out there that's had those get a hold of them picking these other birds up. You grab this bird by the leg and he's flopping and pick him up. Sometimes he will get you with that. And uh, it's not a good feeling. Let me just put it like that. Uh, but get up to your bird, hold him down. Just get him and hold him down. Just like this. I don't care how, what you gotta do to keep him from moving. Just do that and hold him down until he goes ahead and expires on out and, and quits moving. Once he quits moving, and after you've looked at him, get your bag out, I want you to get you one of these paper towels, and just tear your little section off of it like that right there. And you want to take this and open this bird's mouth, just like I'm doing right there, and take this paper towel and just shove it down into this, this bird's throat like that even a couple of them, whatever it takes to, to stop it, okay? And what you're doing is, any of this blood that's released in this body system of the body of this bird, it leaks down towards the head, which they normally always do. It's gonna come down through this uh, esophagus and this paper towel will soak it up and we'll wanna allow it out to drip up on your outer side of your feathers and get your mouth all messed up and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, don't forget to take your lawn, some paper towels, a baggie, and some electrical tape. Now, once you get this bird uh, throat stuff with his 
paper towel, take you some more paper towels like this and just basically cover his head up down to the worst feathers meet. You wanna take your bag, all this you're gonna use, say put your bird, just kinda of stuff it up in the corner of your bag, just like that right there. Squeeze your bag down around the neck. Don't get to stay off your feather section here. And then just take your tape and you wanna wrap it and tighten this up around this bird's neck. Now you can get it pretty firm with it doing up in here on the skin area like this, or it will come off. Kind of like that. Put it off. Then you got him fully protected. Now no blood can come out of this. Even if you get your bird in a bad position accidentally to where you know it could leak out on your feathers or whatever, it won't do it because you've got it fully protected right here with this with this bag. Another thing I would suggest, uh, I don't have one here with me, but I would suggest taking along a large clear uh, garbage sack with you, a clear one. That way when you get this done, you can take your bird and slide him down into that clear bag and roll him up real nice and tight. That allows you to see where these feathers and stuff are or located instead of just putting it in there, having to wad it all up in a black one, don't know where anything is. In other words, what you're trying to do is keep this thing uh, as in a good a position as you can possibly get it. So get him into the, get him into the uh, clear bag, and then at that point, uh, you can take him and put him on into your hunting vest and pack him on out. So in a nutshell, that's a good way to, uh, you know, once the bird's down, get him protected, try to keep the blood off of him and in a good a shape as you possibly can and you will get a better turkey mount back from your taxidermist even with those little tips right there. Okay, we're gonna get started. Here's his leg right here. So what I want you to do, you're gonna have to have you some sharp knives with you. I use scalpel blades mainly. I have uh, other knives and things. Uh, a pair of some kind of game sears, snippers. But at this point right here, your first cut, all you're gonna do, you're gonna go uh, from leg to leg, right straight across, okay? Right straight across. So I'm gonna go in here, and I know you can't see every bit of this and stuff, but I'm gonna try to talk to you and let you know what's going on here. So I'm gonna start cutting. I'm just gonna open him up right across here. If you got some help this, you know, to hold this other leg up, by means use them. Uh, it's a little bit easier with, with a little bit of help doing this particular um, cut right here. Just simply by having somebody to, to hold the other leg up for you. I'm feeling uh, the coldness on this bird, uh, so I'm hoping that he is thought up enough that we can get him skinned on out. I definitely don't want to try to skin no bird out and him half froze because it will cause you to make cuts that, believe me, you don't want to make uh, because you can't tell, you know, where everything is and all that kind of stuff. Well, I've got that cut made. I'm gonna turn it around here and try my best to let you see uh, a little bit of what I've done here. That wing is all up in the way. But I don't know if you can see right here or not. There are so many feathers on these things. Um, I'll try the best I can. Right in there, just from, just from, uh, from leg to leg. One little cut, that's all you gotta go. All right, once you get that done, you wanna take your fingers and start working up and under this skin right here up towards the towards the turkey's head and i'm just pushing my fingers around and you can work a lot of this loose man i mean just just with your fingers don't ever cut this bird up the middle of his breast that's a no-no um, you can do it and still get them out and all that kind of stuff but um it's best to to not do that because most of you tax terms nowadays are mountain turkeys similar to the way I'm fixing to skin this one right here out. 
I'm probably going to take the wings off of this particular bird. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to and you don't feel comfortable uh, doing that. Uh, by all means, don't do it. Uh, don't let, you know, let your taxidermist do it. But there's really nothing to it. I'm going to try my best uh, to show you how to do that uh, on today's How Do You Do That. And by means too, if you see anything um, you like, con you know, concerning my channel, subscribe to it and hit the like button. It will help us out uh, by all means. All right, I'm gonna do a little knife cutting. I have run my hand up in here about as far as I can at this particular time. I'm gonna try to spread this thing on out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna cut Get right here where I can hopefully let you see a little bit more what I'm actually doing. I'm not, no way gonna be able to let you see everything. It won't let me do it. What I'm doing, I'm taking this, <clears throat> I'm taking this skin on the bottom and I'm working it down towards his vent. And I'm gonna work right across that. Matter of fact, we're gonna cut through that, through the vent. And we're going down to his tail where his tail feathers ain't uh, meet is what we're doing. I'm, I always keep just a little bit of tension on it as you're cutting. Um, and if you knock a hole, you know, in it somewhere, it's not to stroke over, you're gonna uh, be able to still mount your bird. But I mean, obviously try not to, uh, you know, to cut it, cut it all to pieces and stuff uh, if you can. And i tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this one leg completely off here and get it out of my way. And you can do this too. Now you see where I, watch where my hand and my glove go. I'm right here at the top of this thigh, okay? So what you wanna do, cut right around the top of that thigh. Go all the way around that leg. There's almost a place there even without any feathers, you'll notice. And and cut this loose, cut the skin loose. Leave all your main feathers on this thing, on, around this leg right here. And just cut this in a round circle, right around the leg area, right around the thigh. Just like that right there, okay? We have got that loose now. I'm gonna show you, I'm fixing to pull this. And they call this the sock method, by the way. Which I, I like that term. I, I think Shane Smith named that the sock method. I'm not really sure who the author of that is, but it's a good name, whoever whoever authored it. Because basically when you build this leg back, it's just like putting a, a sock on the turkey or whatever, you know? But anyway, you work this on down um, all the way forward. You have to at this time if you want to. You don't have to at this time, but um, you work it far as far as you want to. That'd be your personal preference at this particular time. Right now, I think I'm just gonna uh, pull it down here about the, the bend in the knuckle pretty close to there. And uh, just, I'm trying to just get enough that you can see and know what's, what's going on if you've never done this before. Okay, now I'm gonna cut right around the top of that knuckle, right in his thigh, right in that joint what you're trying, where you're trying to go for. And it may take you a time or two to hit it or whatever, but just keep a little twist, a little pressure on it, and uh, you'll feel it. It'll pop loose. And I just like uh, cutting up a, a chicken uh, leg or something like that. And uh, when you get it, and see right there it is, it's just no problem at all. I mean, I just hit right down into that, right down into that knuckle, and all she's fixing to come. There you go. So see, it's just simple as that. Now that's one thing out of your way right there. If you're having to transport this bird or whatever, um, you can do this. You can go on and, and fillet this big hunk of meat off here, take your clippers, cut these leaders loose uh, and stuff. And this is um, a space saver even right here with just getting this leg right there loose. I'm gonna lay this right over here. Um, I like to leave one leg on it uh, when I'm doing this uh, for hanging purposes. Uh, I have a horse here behind me. Well, probably, well, obviously you seen it when I got it down. But um, 
I like to hang them up at some point and work on them. And you can do the same thing if you're out in a timber. You don't have to have this uh, horse and all this, just hang it on a limb, you know, whatever you gotta do to get it, get it airborne and, and hung up. All right, I'm gonna continually skin and I'm just working the, <clears throat> working on right around the edges here so far. You know, we've got the breast opened up up in here. Um, we've got one leg off and we're skinning on down towards the bird's tail section where his, where his fan is. So far we've been lucky. We haven't knocked a hole in it. Um, man, I've been doing taxidermy for 25 years and I still knock little holes in them every now and then, you know, so I mean, if you knock a hole in it, don't, you know, don't get crazy or nothing. I mean, you can still mount it and don't worry about it. All right. All right, I'm getting on down here towards the end of the tail here. We're going to cut this tail off, the tail feathers. Right here is his vent. I'm going to go actually all these down feathers and stuff i'm on i'm gonna leave them leave them on there and then right above his vent i'm gonna come across with a cut and i'm gonna come right back in here and i'm gonna meet this other cut that i have already cut right here and if you don't um, skin them out this way, uh, that's fine. I know people do it different ways. So I'll take this hot little piece of hide right here and just fold it uh, back over uh, when I mount the bird and glue it, pin it, whatever. Um, but if there is a tax, I know where it's at and I don't have to worry about, the, about that. So I'm cutting on down. I am starting to feel his tail quills now. I'm on them and uh, I'm gonna reach and I'm gonna bend upwards just a little bit. I'm gonna get my snips at this time. And there is a bone right here in the middle. Just start clipping at it. You will get it, it will, it will come loose. Once you get that loose, <clears throat> you wanna take this back and continue dislocating the bird's fan. Okay. We've just about got it. Dislocating. And there it is. Now there is his fan. Here's another uh, problematic area if you're transporting a bird. Uh, if this is still attached to the bird, uh, beating it, banging it all up. So here's some places right in here in this bird. That the hunter obviously has done some stuff that, that it shouldn't be done. This one's in good shape compared to a lot of them though. Uh, but anyway, when you get the pan off, it should look something like, something like that right there. At least that's the way I, I, I take them off. All right, we've got one leg off and one fan, which is the only fan he's got. I'm going to lay this fan over here with the leg at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and at this point and work around um, this leg a little bit much as I can while it's laying right here. And we're fixing to, <clears throat> we're fixing to hang it up back on the horse. Let me hit my button, let this down a little bit. <clears throat> This point is when I personally like to hang them up and do most of the rest of the work uh, for skinning the bird uh, out on it. I like to do it. You don't have to do this. You can literally uh, do this without hanging them up. But uh, it's just a lot easier, at least this for me, uh, to work on them hanging up such as this right here. I'm gonna move that camera just a little bit closer since 
Um, I have backed up some and maybe maybe we can see just a little bit better uh, if I get right on up in here with it. Some more right there maybe. Okay. Now then we have got to dislocate uh, this other leg right here. Now I'm talking about skin wise, not meat wise at this time. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right, just remember right around the top of the thigh. That's where you wanna cut your skin and uh, dislocate your meat from the body of the bird. Just like that right there. I have got it totally uh, eliminated, unhooked, and now we're gonna start working this cape down the back of the bird. Now, you really have to be careful, real careful in this area right here because there's not much meat on, this, on, the, bo on the bone part of the back of these birds and you will knock a hole in it very fast. Uh, so be extremely careful when you're coming down here and keep this blade down at that body at all times. Don't never get it up on your hide because you're gonna knock a hole in it when you do. And this, you know, this is a very important, uh, important part of your bird uh, because it's your feathers that's gonna be standing up on the back. So, you know, you don't wanna mess them up uh, very much if you can not do it. And then also uh, the bird, that's, the feather that's on uh, your breast part of your bird. Be extremely careful uh, with both of those areas because they're gonna, you know, finalize uh, what your bird turns out looking like. I mean, this thing, I mean, I'm just like right on the bone. See, it's skin, bone, skin, bone. No meat hardly whatsoever, just a little slight uh, membrane uh, that holds that together right in here. I've always, here's a tip, if you don't know where you're cutting at, always cut above and pull down. Most of the time, just like right here, I can see the hide right there. But if I get somewhere I can't see this and I don't know what's going on, cut up here. See what I'm doing? Get on top of it, way on up here, quarter inch above whatever, wherever you're cutting. And sometimes that'll stop you from, from cutting a hole and then get the cape back to where you can actually uh, see what you're doing, which is right there. Okay. I'm going to reach and get a paper towel. And that's another tip, too, I have learned my own self. From going to get you a paper towel. And, man, you can get a hold of stuff much better with this paper towel and pull on it. It's just so much easier when you got this towel on here uh, for grip, you know, gripping purposes. It will really grip a whole lot better. So we're working her down the back now. I'm gonna try to hurry up, not bore you to death with this video. Uh, I know all you want to see is how to get this hide off this turkey. And believe me, uh, I'm wanting to get it off too. So I'm gonna try to teach as I do it and get this thing packed up and get it back in the freezer for now. I understand there's lots of people out there that haven't done this very much. And believe me, I use YouTube all the time myself. There's uh, a few videos out here doing this, cutting the wings off in the legs. I know John Beard and, and Shane uh, both have videos out showing people uh, learned how to do that. You know, and, and one of the main reasons why is because, brother, we, you know, we taxidermists and, and you know, we do try to do good work, good quality work. And if we can get the hunter uh, to take care of his part, it makes our job so much easier and you'll get a, a way better mount back, man. Just by, just by you uh, taking proper care of the bird, you know, after, after it's uh, killed. And that, it's not only with this either, man. Ducks too, man. I mean, be careful and watch what you're doing. You don't let your dog get a hold of them, tear them all to pieces and bite holes all in them. I've, I've had ducks come in here, man, 
It looked like they'd been shot with a buck shot and stuff, you know. And I, I asked them, man, y'all let it, you know, when I start mounting, start working on it, y'all let a dog get up? No, I ain't, I ain't never asked one yet that told me a dog got a hold of the bird, you know. No, we, we went out there and waited out and got him a, you know, boat or whatever. But anyway, man, way it goes in this line of work, you know. All right, man. Enough of that. We're getting on down here. Let me fuck so I can fold this back now. now. Remember up here on this breast, that's right here. That's where I had stick, stuck my hand down in here. I didn't even use a knife on any of this, remember? I worked all this loose just with my fingers. So all that right there on that breast there has been pulled back just with my fingers. At this point, you just want to work all this down um, as much as you can get it until you get to the section where the wings are connected to the body. And then we're gonna dislocate that. I'm gonna show you um, on this video how to how to just leave the wings on on the cape because I, I don't wanna make it too complicated for you guys or it's, it's going off somewhere and you never did this before, uh, having to try to cut the wings all the way off the cape and get it in the right position and all that type of stuff. I'm gonna show you how to do it though. If you want to go there and do that, you can. Um, and I'm gonna show you both ways. Okay, and then that way, uh, whatever you decide to do, that'll be your personal preference. Uh, whether you wanna take the wings off or not. So I'm keeping just a little pressure on this wing and I'm pushing out at this time. And I'm cutting, pulling down you will have to cut into this meat. When you get to this joint, you're gonna to have to start cutting in and pulling out. And most of the time, it will pop loose to where you can tell. Uh, and I'm gonna show you uh, up a little bit closer on uh, exactly right where to cut it when I get there. To me personally, this back down through here is the slowest part because it's so well, like I said earlier, it is so uh, close to your bone area, uh, and you have to be extremely, extremely cautious with that. Now, I'm pushing down. See, these wings are getting loose now because I'm down here. On. I'm pulling down and dip, really dislocating. All right. Oh, uh, I'm going to cut right here, right here, right here. I'm trying to get in here, and there's a knuckle right there. Go to where that knuckle is, friend. You got him hanging up in the tree out there where you killed him. And work in between that. See, just fall on down just like it wasn't nothing. All, basically, all you're doing is just locating this knuckle right here. And be extremely cautious in behind this knuckle because you don't want to get back in here uh, on your hide. I've got the wing totally dislocated right there. Now, at this point... It's guesswork, friends. You cannot see uh, where you're cutting in behind that wing. And that's the reason I said, be extremely cautious uh, at this point right here when you when you get that wing done off of here. Uh, basically what you have to do is, uh, is go in behind <clears throat> where that knuckle is blinded and get back, get back on your cape. And that's that's kind of a difficult uh, area too to work with. All right, I got that bone dislocated. Both the wing, there's the both knuckles are dislocated right here, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling down. Let me pick this thing up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna turn around here. Maybe you can see. I'm I'm just gonna start cutting right in here, and I'm pulling. I'm pulling down with my hand. And I'm, what I'm doing, I am looking, I'm looking for that cape. Now, now so I got, I got a rounded, this is a number 70 scaffold blade. It's a Skinner blade, basically what I call it anyway. You really need this in certain areas on the bird, and this is one of them. If you go in here with a, if you go in here with a number 60, see that tip on there? It's gonna come more to knocking a hole on the other side of your cape. 
than this round, rounded blade is. And by all means, if you feel comfortable using that, use whatever you want to use. Uh, just use a good sharp one and, uh, and go in here and relocate. See, I'm seeing it right here. I'm cut. When I'm coming across here, I'm going very feathery light. Light, I mean light, light. And I'm hunting this tape and I'm pulling it down. See, I'm seeing his neck right here. Right here's his neck, neck muscle and bones. Pulling down. We getting there, brother. All right, I'm gonna work it on down on the press right here. Being very careful coming across uh, this area also. I'm pulling downward, downward. And I gotta still find again on this wing, get through this meat real lightly. If you look right here, see if I'd have kept cutting here, I'd have knocked a hole in this hide right there. Watch for you, watch where your hide's at. Pull down, keep this hide in your vision at all times, if you possibly can. And when you get in this uh, area where there's uh, what they call the crop, uh, there's a big, this bunch of old stuff right there, man. I remember when I first started skinning turkey, that was a problematic area for me, man. I'd hit that crop area, and, which is all this stuff in here, and just about knock a hole in them every time, you know? And still will sometimes. But uh, I always remember working at the top. See, I get into, <clears throat> I get into the same situation uh, when skinning an animal. I get to a place to where I can't see this cape my own self, and I have to practice what I'm preaching, brother. I'm cutting up above in these areas like that. Even if I get in that meat, I don't care. I'm searching, getting up above the, uh, where the cape is, or at least where I think it is, and I'm pulling down. See, we've got his whole breast. See, if you want to fillet this off, you know, at this point, you could do that or whatever. You know, there's a lot of people throw these things away, man. Ain't no way I throw it away. <clears throat> I got some. I got some friends that does uh, two, three hundred of these things a year, man. And I mean, they they get so many of them, in, you know. They'll bring them over and leave them meat, everything. I mean, it's like I guess they kill so many. They ain't worried about it, something. I don't really know. All right, I've got down here to where his crop area is. Here's his neck, right here in my hand. We got to get this particular part out of here. This crop. I'm just gonna go under my thumbs. And I'm gonna pull down, and just as much as I can, just start pulling down on it, and try to pull this loose as much as I can. Go back up in here with your knife, way on up in here, man, and just cut this loose. See, there's the crop, man, and eye still froze in it. Pull and cut. Remember, pull and cut. There's the crop right there where all the food stored. We're getting in here. What we're doing now, we're working in to his neck area, in front of his neck. Once we get to that neck, we're going down. <clears throat> All right, there we go, brother. Once you get this neck, hey, you got it. Don't cut that head off, <clears throat> whatever you do. I used to make that mistake. Uh, all the time. I mean, be honest with you. I always hang them up. Matter of fact, that's where I start out at. I, I cut the head off, let them sit there and drain, this, and that, and other. I think I watched John Beard's video or something. Another man got that tip off there. Uh, but it's an awesome tip. Uh, keep that head on there, man, and put that towel in it, like I said. And what's that reason why? That keeps that blood from getting all over your bird and stuff, man. You see blood start coming out. Just like I got right there. Here's another tip. Grab you some paper towels. Just like keep these around close. You're going to need them uh, to keep the blood off your bird. I mean, you can just, whatever you need to do to keep this thing uh, clean, this is what you do right here. Just keep these paper towels on it as uh, much as you have to. Work this on down. Go down as far as you want to. There ain't no rule. The taxidermist can take it from here. Plus, you've got him right here. This is really... Uh, I mean, it's, it's all you need to do right here for transportation until you got him all the way down to the neck, see? So what I'm gonna do right here at this point, man, I'm gonna get some paper towels around this thing, and I'm just gonna uh, 
I'm gonna cut him off right here and get him back up on the table. And we're gonna fold him up. And I'm gonna show you the difference between what you got singing or if you'd have had to take and deliver, you know, a whole bird from out of state or whatever. Take your pair of your clippers you got in your bag. We just cut that off right there. There you go. Now look, look here at all this. Oh, uh, I don't even see it now. It's just dripping, 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 dripping blood. All that would have been, you'd cut that head off. So it's been all down on your feathers and all that kind of stuff. Take these tiles. Man, just put them in here. It don't really matter. And fold this thing back up. Just like that right there. Leave them tiles in there. Shake him out a little bit, man. Just like that, man. We got him. I always, too, man, keep your hands clean as possible while you're working on these birds. Uh, I have, and you put a little pair of these in your turkey vest, take them with you, a little pair of gloves. Uh, but watch that kind of stuff. I mean, if you get to, if you get to blood, all, you know, dirt and blood stuff all over your gloves and go back and grab your bird, you're gonna get it right back on him and, and just defeating what you're trying to do to start with, okay? All right, we got him right there. He's all caked out. His wings are still on. Now, I said I was gonna show you <clears throat> how to cut the wings off because a lot of people don't, don't know that deal yet, neither. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them off just to show you uh, where to do it at. If, you know, the other taxidermists out there watching, you know, wanting to know how to do it and things like that nature, that's what we're here for, to help each other and uh, help one another out, man. Not just taxidermists, but just uh, hunters in general, man. And try to pass on uh, things that'll help us uh, to accomplish uh, better mounts. All right, if you look, man, right here they call, I know your taxidermists know this, but that little section of feathers right there is called your scalps. Okay, when you go to cut this wing off and dislocate it clean from the from the bird, don't cut these scalps off. So that's what you there's your guideline right there. I go right up in the right up in the section of scalps there. It's almost no feathers there at all. And just start cutting right there. And it's really basically the same thing that you done on the leg as far as uh, the roundness of it. You're just gonna cut right down through that section and stay right up in it. See, I heard your bone right there. Stay right around the edge of this. Because you're, uh, when you mount this, uh, all these feathers and stuff, man, it's gonna cover all this stuff right back up. And, and it ain't gonna matter no way far as this cutting and stuff goes on. Just make sure you don't get uh, into your main feathers while you're dislocating this wing. And so, I mean, even if you wanted to do this while you're out, um, you know, traveling or whatever, and take this whole wing off, uh, you can you can do this also. However, uh, it's totally unnecessary uh, just to get it to the taxidermist, you know. Uh, they'll take care of this right here for you. And by the way, um, you know, I really wouldn't recommend this if your taxidermist don't know how to mount a bird yet and put these wings back on. Uh, if they've been cut off like this right here, because that's, that may be something totally uh, new to him that he, he's not aware of. But I just, I said I was gonna show you how to do it uh, because that's what this uh, channel is about, is how to do stuff. And I'm here to try to teach people how to do some things that I have learned throughout the years. And by the way, I'm still learning. I, I hope to never get to the point to where you know, I'm up on this pedestal and you guys, you know, y'all way down here still no, I ain't about that kind of stuff. All right, man, we have got the wing totally off this bird, as you can see, and it's in good shape. And it got a little distortion right in there and stuff, but this makes a big difference mounting a turkey, man. I mean, you can get this wing in, in such a nice um, position uh, when you go to mounting and, uh, I just like, I like the technique myself, you know. I think Shane Smith came up with this uh, deal. But okay, all right, man, I'm gonna lay this wing over here. We've got the wing over here. We've got the tail and one leg over here. And we still got one leg right here to do. 
I'm going to go ahead and stand this up just a little bit. And I'm going to totally let this down because what I'm wanting to do uh, in this video is, is pack this thing up and show you uh, how, to, how to do it for transportation or even how to do it at your house if you want to skin your own bird out, you know, for before you take it to the taxidermist. Uh, you can do this and uh, put it in your freezer and keep it a little while or whatever. Okay, this is better anyway. You can see this better. Uh, see right there at the top of his thigh. I'm gonna go right, right around that. Just like that right there. I'm gonna try to get in here on that knuckle, wherever it's at. It's somewhere right in here. It's easier I could cut this off laying down uh, than it is hanging up, to be honest with you, because you can use the pressure of this bird to break this, um, break this knuckle loose. And if you're good enough, by the way, you can hit it anyway. But it's somewhere in this section right here. Let me get my, my clipper here and I'll maybe I can bust it loose. It's like that. All right, bro, I'm gonna lay, here's the body. I'm just gonna lay it down over here. Um, obviously, we're gonna take the um, breast meat out of that later. Uh, this guy that, that killed this bird, he he definitely wants his meat, and we're gonna vacuum seal it up for him, put the date on it, put his name on it, wash it, clean it up, and put it in the freezer uh, around his cape. And that way, when he comes and picks up his uh, mounted bird, he will have his meat fresh, vacuum sealed, and taken care of. All right, here's your um, body of, your your hide off of your body of your bird. I'm gonna open him back up just a little bit, and we're gonna lay <clears throat> these legs and the fan, or other wing, or at least the legs, right into this cavity right here. Now I like to take take mine and actually put them in to some more plastic or something because I don't even like these uh, leg feathers and stuff getting stuff all over. And if I stuff that up in there, um, you know what's going to happen. So let me let me grab a bag right quick or two. Let's see. Okay. I'll get this leg down. And remember, you can do all this out in the field, man. Right where you at? Uh, right where you kill the bird if you want to. Just don't let nobody else skin your bird out. If you're out on a trip or something, man, and mess your bird up, you know, you pay all that money and go out and they split your bird up the middle and mess it all up and everything. Um, all right, I got both the legs together. I'm gonna put them down into this bag right here. Pretty much as simple as that, and I'm gonna wrap this thing up. Just like that right there. All right, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stuff it right up into this cape. Right up into this cavity. <clears throat> this is as far as I can get it. Just like that right there. All right, all you're liking now, <clears throat> really, is this tail. Now I'll cut this other wing off, just for illustration. Like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend you doing this if you're a taxidermist you don't know how to, how to mount a, um, a turkey with the wings cut off of it. So just leave, that, uh, just leave the wings on there would be your best bet with that, with that situation. I'm gonna wrap this thing up real nice. I'm not gonna over wrap it, pushing it and all that. I'm just lightly to moderately. All right, it's protected. <clears throat> I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it right on in there too. With that right there. All right, man, that look, that's looking pretty good right there. And we still got the head attached. Now, if you are wanting a freeze dried head done, you know, I know most guys do that now, um, you will obviously have to get your tax germs to cut this off and have this uh, head uh, sent off to someone in freeze dried or whatever. I don't use freeze dried heads anymore. They like some nice, good quality heads on the market that's artificial. I prefer them. I like, I mean, I like the real heads, but it's just, it's just become so much trouble. Uh, let me get one more bag. 
Um, it's just become so much trouble uh, with the shipping nowadays, getting stuff here and there and back. And not to mention the cost of the stuff of having it done. I'm going to go ahead and put the fan in here. I'm going to go right up in this corner. And I'm going to also just lightly twist it around just like that right there. And I'm going to put it right up in here. Now, we got everything we need to have a nice mount off the body <clears throat> without a lot of weight. I mean, right there. This, this whole ordeal probably don't weigh five pounds, you know, fixed like this right here. It's a lot easier to transport this uh, or put it in your freezer than it is <clears throat> with the legs sticking out here, you know, uh, fans still attached, all that kind of crap, and you done got rid of the heaviest part of your turkey uh, right there. Now, once I get to that point, I'm gonna put this whole turkey in this bag. I'm gonna put his head right up in here <clears throat> and I'm just gonna slide the rest of his body right into here. And like I said, I don't even have no clear bag myself. Right now, I wish I did. I prefer, I prefer putting them in clear bags and there goes all that out because you can tell uh, better what you're doing for when you wrap this thing up and everything. By the way, these things don't necessarily have to be in the cavity of that bird. You can just put them into this bag, just like I'm doing. <clears throat> but you can see how this wing, see, it's still trying to stick out and stuff. If I had this one ahead and cut this off, uh, it would have wrapped up a whole lot nicer, uh, just like the other one in there. Now, once you get all this bird into this bag, close this end up right here, and I want you to take it at the bot right here. Take it and just lightly push, push and squeeze, push and all the way up. And you're getting this air out of here. See what I'm doing? I'm pushing this air out. I'm getting all of it that I can possibly get out. If you don't get every little bit of it, man, it don't matter. You're still in a whole lot better shape right here than you was with that right there on there. All right. They're going to twist him up. Like that right there. You know, if you got some tape or ties, probably be better just to tie, tape it up or tie it if you can. I'm going to just go ahead and tie this up right there just like that. All right, when I get that bird like that, hey, man, I got him. You know, he's fully protected. Um, I'm going to wrap, I'm going to take him and being a taxi driver, you know, I'm going to have to label it and, uh, whose it is, you know, what it is, all this kind of stuff, and put it back into the freezer. And of course, it wouldn't hurt you to do the same thing if you're putting it in your own freezer. You're gonna need an identification on it. So wrap it up, you know, how much he weighed, if you had a chance to weigh him, um, things like that, just where well, you can keep up with, with what you got when you take it to the tax driver, you can tell them, cause, you know, we have to order bodies for these things, you know, and they're different weights. And if you can just get in that, range of the body, the tax numbers can pretty much get the, the body that will fit the thing. And so, man, that's going to about wrap this up for us and skinning the old bird and getting him over the freezer. I'm going to lay him right over here and uh, talk to you just for a few minutes before I get out of here um, on a few other things. We're going to do some videos coming up besides this. On, I do processing uh, here, too. Uh, during the winter time, I, I, I don't do hundreds of them and all that, nor do I want to. I just enjoy doing it, man, and I, I do some really good taste of deer meat, some stuff I've learned throughout the years uh, of how to make them taste better uh, and get the gamey taste out of them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I want to do some videos concerning that, um, how to make your deer meat taste like pure beef uh, or maybe even better. Now, I'm referring to ground beef, uh, not your ribeyes and stuff like that. All right, I want to I want to teach you how to age your deer meat. I know three different ways of doing that, and I know some guys are not big on that. They don't see no purpose in it and all this kind of stuff, and that's fine if that's your game, you know, but, uh, you know, some people do like it, and, you know, I'm one of them. 
Uh, I, I will not eat hard to eat dairy meat anymore without it being aged uh, because it, it's just so many benefits to it. It tastes better to me personally. It cuts up better to me personally and it will you too. Um, I want to teach uh, the beginners, you know, how to skin a deer. Uh, there's a lot of uh, young people out there just getting into hunting and stuff. They don't have a clue how to skin a deer. So I want to do that on a video. I want to share how to store your deer meat from field to freezer once you get your deer down. Uh, maybe a few different techniques of packing it up. Uh, I have a nice um, um, freezers to put it in and also uh, a nice vacuum chambered sealer over there. I really like the chamber sealer uh, to seal my meat up in. It keeps real good and it's good for um, a lot of different packages, one right after another. Um, I want to teach how to process your own deer and save money. If you don't know how to process a deer, uh, I want to teach you how to do that. It's not as hard as a lot of people think it is. I want to have you to have the best tasting deer meat. I want to teach you how to do that um, on one of the videos, period. I want to teach you how to tenderize your deer meat on a video. A lot of people have problems with that, you know, the toughness of the meat. And they'll take the tenderizer meat and uh, shaker and put that kind of stuff on it and all that. Man, I never had work for me. If it worked for you, that's fine. But I know a couple other ways of tenderizing it. I have a commercial tenderizer and also a, a mallet, you know, that you can tenderize, tenderize it with. I want to teach you how to sharpen your knives, man. I've got this right over here to my right. You can't see it, but I've got a... Uh, a knife sharpener, it's the wheel thing. And I've been doing that for so long. I've, I've known how to sharpen knives before I ever even became a taxidermist. All right, I wanna to talk to you about mineral licks for your deer herd. I had a guy teach me a good technique this year. It seems to be working real good. Got four or five good uh, ingredients in it that the deer are liking. So I wanna teach you how to, to make your mineral lick for your deer herd where to be effective, man. All right, I want to talk to you on one video about staying scent free in the woods. That's a big thing with me. Uh, I use scent lock clothing and uh, some sprays that I make. I believe in them. They've proved themselves to me. Uh, and once you know you taste ice cream, brother, you don't need nobody to tell you it's good. You know, you know it's good. So staying scent free in the woods, deer hunting. I want to teach you how to stay safe in the deer woods, man. Why climbing a tree? portable stands, lock-ons, saddle, whatever. Uh, I wanna teach you uh, how to stay safe where you can get back home with your harness, uh, with your lifelines. We'll do a video on that kind of thing. Staying safe in the woods. And uh, by the way, uh, just to make mention, uh, one of this kind of home with me is safe thing. I, back in 2007, I fell around 27 foot from a tree and uh, I was sent to the trauma center uh, for about 27 days and nights and uh that's 15 years ago from now and i'm still having to take medication because of the breaks and stuff that it that it uh done to me from falling from that tree so man i'm telling you you don't want to go there all right i want to teach you how to use a laser if it's legal in your state on your weapons i've been using lasers for I don't know, 35 years now, just guessing somewhere in that area. And on, I use them on everything I hunt with, crossbows, high power rifles, you know, other than shotgun, no, I don't put them on shotgun because you pop a laser on in front of a turkey, I'm telling you, you don't want to go there. They coming up from their airborne, they can see that thing coming across there. Uh, I did it one time just fooling with a turkey, I wasn't hunting. Uh, hunting turkeys and um, I was trying to get them out of a field actually and I was just going to bounce it around a little bit you know and I thought maybe they'd put a few times running off in the woods no man I popped that thing on dude and I mean these these turkeys come up and it, it was game over I mean 15 turkeys airborne flying everywhere putting carrying on all you know how they do okay I want to teach you how to put uh, set your scope or your sight in on your shotgun. I'm talking about electronic sights or just your regular scope. A lot of people hunt with, with scopes now with turkey guns, some do, some don't. But if you do do that and um, you wanna see a video on uh, sighting that in on your turkey gun, I do know one way 
to save you some money on it, keep you from having to shoot them high-powered shells up, uh, zeroing that thing in. Now, you are going to have to shoot it one time to finalize it, but up until that point, uh, I can get you in the ball game uh, on the target on that turkey's head. All right, something a little different. We're going to change up game. We're going to go to the garden, man. I've got a real nice garden out here to my left down the hill. This is a brand new garden, by the way. I've got another small one and I'm one across the road over there. But I want to teach you, if you don't know how, how to go in and plow up a new uh, area of land and put you out a total brand new garden. And we're gonna walk, we'll walk down and video this yard. I'll show you the beautiful plants that's out in it. We got nice tomatoes, cucumber squash, uh, corn, peas, just your basic garden stuff, man, going on uh, down there right now. And it's just doing really awesome. I wanna show you how to grow tomatoes, man, consistently year in and year out. And it's so simple, man, a caveman could do it. You remember the old caveman commercial? We're going to go fishing one day, and I'm going to video it, and I'm going to show you how to catch a fish. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there, young beginners, that's getting into fishing, and they're looking for any tip they can. I know most of you watching this video uh, can catch all the bass and catfish and bring them probably you want, man. So, you know, that, ain't, that video probably won't be for you. However, uh, when I do do it, it's going to be a good. My nephew's got a 21-foot Ranger bass boat. We're going to go to Pickwick uh, Lake, and we're going to get on something heavy, and we're going to fish hard on one of the videos. On the other video, I'm going to go pond hopping, and I'm going to show you beginners, man, just how to go to these ponds, catch a few Jurgen bass, maybe some brim or whatever, and bring them back home. Hey, we'll clean them up and have a fish fry for beginners, man. Okay, the last two that's on the list for now, this is about 18 videos I've got coming up in the future. Uh, I want to mount a buck right here in the shop, right here where we're at. And uh, I want to show you how to do that. I know you can see uh, this nice muley in the background. This is a nice deer come from uh, New Mexico, by the way. There's another one hanging right there. Uh, that's a little bit larger than him. But anyway, I want, you to, I want to do part one and part two. I want to do you a mountain video, how to mount this thing. And then two weeks later, we're going to come back and we're going to do one with the finish work on it, which takes me seven to eight hours just to do the finish work on these deer, man. And the reason I'm doing this because most hunters don't have a clue what it takes to mount one of these deer. From the time they bring it into the shop till I get it skin off the head, you know, it goes back to the freezer. You get it on the mannequin, get it flashed, all this kind of stuff. Man, it takes hours and hours and hours. Now, I'm not gonna make two videos with hours and hours and hours on it. I'm just gonna do parts of them, and that way you can kind of basically see, you know, what's going on with mountain a deer. That's gonna about wrap it up today. I see my video done come to about an hour here. I didn't know how long it was gonna take to do this. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, man. I hope you. Hey, some things with the turkey there that uh, you got to see and learn from, put them to benefit to your own self, use it, and uh, maybe it'll work out for you in a better way, especially uh, having to transport them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all these other videos I mentioned, uh, hopefully they're coming up. You know, this year, I'm gonna start trying to do them pretty regularly. And, and if you like this channel of mine, it is called How You Do That. Now that's how, and then a U, just like a regular U, do that, D-A-T, hosting with Greg Hughes. So just pull up how you do that in the future. Uh, and, you know, I'd say all these titles of these things will be on here and even more to come. Man, I appreciate you watching me on this thing. Uh, God bless. I hope you have a wonderful day. And hit that like button and subscribe. We out of here.